Hello everybody out there and welcome back to another Indie Comic Book Review. This is episode 91. Nine more episodes until 100. Remember, when 300 comes, which is in four short weekends, um, the Indie Review will not be affected by any announcements made if there are any involving the Indie Review, at least until we reach episode 100. And then from there we will decide what we are going to do with the indie review so um there probably won't be an announcement for the indie review just because we want it to hit episode 100 so it's immune to any um changes that will or won't happen on this channel at least until 100 and then it becomes unimmune so to right. speak so anyway we are on time we are so on time that today which is monday morning you should be seeing this Tonight, Monday night, you should be seeing the Big Two review. And Tuesday morning, you will be getting Outside the Pages. So you have two days, three video series. Everything is on time. Yep. So, so we did good. We did very good. So yeah. the books in this review were released on... July 1st, 2015. The first week of July. So we got a nice amount of physical books. Yep. And we, and any, some oh, digi and we got some 12 digital books. Go ahead. So without wasting any time, let's start with this book from Bongo Comics, Futurama, issue number 75. The random, also comedy, try-harding, Futurama comic book. What, they were try-harding again? Well, they always try-harded, didn't they, after certain... But yeah, anyway. So it's really just about all of uh, Bender's friends who are going inside of, you know, a Bender's mind as a robot after the whole... Uh, black hole thing uh, happened in the outer space. So think that as friends are dead from that, they were inside of Bender's um, eye and everything. And then they check out everything that was there and, you know, and they're like weird stuff. And the artwork stayed the same as it is on Comedy Central. And, and uh, Cartoon Network and Fox and, and everywhere else and everywhere Futurama's else, been. Yeah. And uh, like I said, it's uh, just all... Funny things and um, hey, I'm glad you know Futurama didn't make it on TV. At least the comic is still going. Yeah, the comic at least is still going, and uh, we just get more about Bender that we never knew before. And uh, oh dear God, a Voltron reference. Yeah, and there is a Voltron, <laughs> a Voltron reference in this book, where um, it was actually uh, pretty random to see that, and yeah, just lots of stuff to see. Um, in this book about uh, being in Bender and all the um, little uh, warning that happened and um, you know uh, Zoidberg or Dr. Zoidberg actually yeah. you know doing that and then it's just um, them getting out of Bender and then that was it so it was really just a life of being inside Bender the robot and all the crazy Earth stuff that happened so it was a random book, but up to you guys if you're Futurama fans, you'll definitely be picking up this book. And the next book, Archie Comics, my favorite, well, in all the series of Worlds Unite, that is. Sonic Boom issue number 9 of Worlds Unite, part 6 of 12. We're okay, now, halfway to the end of the series. Okay, now I have to ask again, and I'm going to do this until it happens, did no. no. There are no Street Fighters or anything else that appear in this book. Because I knew well, you were going to ask that. We're I at the knew you were going to ask that. We're at the halfway point. I mean, come on. Give us something. I mean, what are you going to do? Throw them all in in the last three issues? That's not going to be fun. Expand on the damn thing already. And World Unite's going excellent. I'm a couple of it I'm, is really I'm one or two issues behind now. But it's been going excellent thus far. Oh, yeah, I thought you were hearing mm -hmm. my reviews. Well, yeah, I hear your reviews, but I do block out something so I can read it for myself. That's very sad. Anyway, so yeah, so we have Sonic's team going up, and Mega Man's team with Mega Man X going up against Sigma's robots. And we have lots of action. We have the navigators that are helping out as well, which were sent last issue. And we have Nicole, who actually returns this issue with, of course, Dr. Wild and Dr. Eggman. They're going to turn after the whole Sigma thing. We didn't see that coming. And I uh, want to show some artwork. Yeah, and this is uh, really excellent artwork. We have Sigma's army that he's planning, unless his uh, reploids fail, or however you say, the, something like that. And we have the Deadly Six who gets involved as well. And we have Styx 
from that goes into Genesis Pearl portal in a different universe, and we don't know where or who, what woman she was talking to. What? Really? That's Chun Li, dude. Wristbands, hair. There was an appearance, dude. Oh. Look at that! Come on! I didn't think that was Chun Li. Chun Li, finally. Okay, well I guess Chun Li. Yeah. Well, I didn't want to Chun Li's shadow. Anything, but yeah. But anyway. Finally, so, at least it was a shadow. So, yeah, well, just a shadow, not the. Yeah, but anyway. I mean, anyway. Yeah, keep going. Thank you. So as everything looks and goes so well, the Deadly Six get into Mega Man's head, and well, that happens. Basically, the whole Mega Man team turning on Sonic and his team, and they can't control it because the Deadly Six have them uh, under control. So, Sonic's going to have to find a way to snap them out of it, which I'm sure he will. I mean, because there's still more to go. So, we'll see that with the shadow of Chung Li. But let's see if that's going to take action next issue. Watch it not. All right, now we're going to the Xenoscope. Coven, issue number 105. Coven. Oh, Coven? Oh, I'm sorry. Coven, issue 105, with the Assassin's Creed cover? No, that you you saw the person in the issue. It's not Assassin's Creed. Oh, I thought you said it was... It looked like it. Oh. Maybe it... I don't know. Does it say what it is exactly? No, it's just cover D. No, this is called cover D then. Oh, well, then my mistake. So, what this is about is that uh, basically... There's like the uh, this uh, magical uh, girl. I'm trying to remember what her name is. Um, I think um, well, she's known like to be like a rich Taylor? girl or something. No, not Taylor. Um, well, there's this girl named Avril, which I thought was uh, really um, funny, actually, like Avril Lavigne. And uh, we have these um, like one of these groups that come in to uh, take out the girls because they have like all these powers and um, they're looking for the one that has the sign on the back of the neck which is this triangle right here with amazing artwork by the way and uh, if you want to find out more about what the symbol means and everything definitely read the book so it's basically just them looking for like witches and stuff like that because that's what the symbol means hey Baba Yaga yeah I'm Baba Yaga uh, actually uh, appears in this uh, issue where she um, fights them to save uh, you know them from doing uh, from um, killing the witches yeah killing the witches yeah I was trying to figure out how to say it and uh, she's a real badass character and she actually works with um, someone who she uh, I guess like someone who she doesn't get along with um, why is her name escape me? Oh, Le uh, Lisa, actually. And I think that they will work out pretty well, but uh, in the end, it doesn't look too well for the both of them. To be continued in the next issue. So, uh, I didn't want to give too much away, because I want you guys to definitely read it as the first issue. So, guys, if you want to jump onto a new story, definitely check out uh, Almost that losing one. it there, didn't you? Almost losing <laughs> it, but I got it. Grim Tales of Terror, issue number 12. And from what I'm hearing, the next issue is sadly going to be the last issue. And I really enjoyed uh, Grim yeah, Tales It's of gone Terror. on for a good year. It has, and I give kudos to them for that. But on this issue, it's basically um, a man who wishes for a second chance that he may not get. Is what this story is about. So, like I said, um, like uh, there's this thing that where uh, he... Uh, frames himself, uh, uh, what was his name, because I know his name appeared, um, Ad, uh, uh, Adrian, uh, Adrian, or Adrian? Adrian. Yeah, Adrian, yeah, where, uh, he gets, uh, framed for what he did, and he didn't mention about, uh, the group that he was in, so they put him in this coffin to, underground, and he has this light watch, and finds his way, actually, out of there, because uh, he has a family and everything, so, you know, there's just, like, lots of stuff he goes through. He survives the gunshots, the uh, jumping in the ocean, and surviving everything, so, basically, he's on a roll. For now. Because, remember, this is about him having probably not a second chance. He went back to his family, who, um, they didn't know who he was, and then there were cops that were chasing him, and... Knowing that he was in the year 2000, uh, 
which one call it? Uh, 2013. He said that uh, he found out he was in 2015 when I was in 13 with his face that's kind of uh, ew. Yeah. And then at the end, of course, you know how the woman gets everybody in the end. So, so it was a zombie or something? It was a zombie because he was in this coffin for two years. Two years went by as he was trying to get out of the coffin because he was in 2013. So now two years went by, and then he turned to this hideous monster, which is probably why his family didn't know it was him. And why the cops were after him as well, thinking that was a uh, burglary or something like that. So the next issue will be its final conclusion. It's a season finale, so you never know. Well, hopefully they'll come back. Robin Hood issue number 12. Now this one was pretty interesting, actually. And it's actually a, a tale of Rot, it's called. And Rot is uh, basically uh, this person right here with amazing artwork and he wants the curse to be lifted <clears throat> and both Robin and um, Marion are going to people basically just to find out how to lift his, his curse. That's how I could sum up the whole book. So they go to uh, Mr. Cormac who said nothing and then they go to this other person um, to meet with uh, Mr. Sherman well, Monty Sherman, actually. And Monty Sherman's a tree that looks like Groot. No joke. That looks like a tree. It's really something. And then, as the issue continues, it, it gets a little bit of the backstory about uh, Rot. And uh, then as the issue continues on, then we find out how his curse can be lifted. And if you want to find out how it can be lifted, definitely... Read the book to find out because that is something that I do not want to give away. And there's also Van Helsing vs. Dracula that's coming out too, which uh, I'm going to definitely check out. Aliens vs. Zombies looks like something I'm going to be grabbing. Yeah, that too. But uh, Robin Hood, Patrick Shan, awesome book. Each and every time that I read it. Next and two physical books are our books of the week, yeah, I would like to think. And my book of the week, top definitely has to go to Valiant's Exo Man of War, issue number 38. The Wedding Ceremony of Arak and Sana. And this is actually my first uh, book I got from Valiant. First physical copy. Oh, first yeah. physical copy. Of many. there will yeah. We will be grabbing some of our favorite series and trade paperbacking yeah. back like for Exo to catch up. Cover, since it's the wedding event. And there were several covers, so... Yeah. You know, it just talks about how Arak uh, was talking with... Uh, Lady Mirage, who brought, who talks Dr. to Mirage, spirits, yeah. Doctor Mirage, who brought the spirit of his other wife, uh, Dajira, or however you say mm -hmm. her name, basically giving him permission to marry uh, the other woman that he's with, and you know you feel for his character because um, he feels loyal to her. Yeah, I did read this digitally before Mike got a fist. I know. Did you feel like you wanted to cry with I him? I felt bad because you, you know his to. wife was yeah, his wife you was know? dead. So yeah. And uh, here's some artwork, by the way. Fantastic artwork. Definitely Valiant. And it's just basically Santa saying to uh, move on as Arak proposes to her. A week later, goes to the ceremony. And they uh, exchange their vows, get married. Tons and, of guest stars. Like the yeah, Warrior, all, Ninjak, the Robot, um, Livewire, known as Amanda. And... So many other things, and he just thanks Dodgery for moving on stuff. The second story we get about, well, this one is just a sketchy thing. I don't know why they added that. We have the second story of the Lady Sana, where she was a slave master, and it talks about how Arak saved her mm -hmm. from being a slave. And I actually thought that that was interesting, because I want to know, when she talked about being a slave master, I want to know the backstory of what she meant. And then the last story of the talk was where... Ar how Arak met with uh, Daughtry. So uh, I thought that was actually uh, pretty interesting. That talked about you know what he did also before becoming uh, the suit. And then the fourth story was just a funny thing where there's a ball just... That's the suit, the Exo suit, yeah. That, it's the Exo suit, yeah. But guys, strongly and highly recommend this. This is my number one pick of all the comic companies. This one right here is definitely number one. And congrats to Arak. May he have many more years of happiness with Santa.
And you'll now, my favorite book of the week definitely goes to, t uh, indie word review wise, goes to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles issue number 47. Everything is building up to issue 50. Big, big things are definitely coming, and you could see things really heating up to a, to a head. So, in this issue, Casey, uh, Alaplex, Angel, uh, Mr. O'Neill and uh, a few other neighbors in the in the neighborhood uh, end up fighting against Hun and the Purple Dragon. So it's father versus son, and the father is still saying, you know, I came here to teach you a lesson, but actually, I think you've been learning all along. No matter what, it's like you said, blood is blood, and the this is the Jones's way. We fight with fists and feet, with blood and broken bones. We're not ones to really just sit back and relax. And he's like, we're more alike than you're willing to admit. Uh, whether you agree with my ways or I, or I, whether I, you don't agree with my ways or I don't agree with yours. And then he gets arrested, which he deserves. And this yeah. all leads into, then they go into Sh uh, Splinter and the Turtles talking about the scroll. And um, April says she wants to take the scroll. She's on a uh, break from school so she wants to take Casey on a uh, road trip which leads into the Casey and April miniseries. I love how they they um, put the miniseries inside the book somehow. They they find a way to interlace yeah, they, it they within the book. And um, uh, what's her name? April's mom actually believes it'll be a good thing for Casey to get out a little bit and uh, get away after what happened with Hun. Shredder returns to the Foot Clan and he brings back the Stockman, which Cowrie doesn't agree with. She's like, are you sure we should bring another outsider? And he's like, yeah, because we have important business we need to tend to. And he's going to use Baxter Stockman to exterminate the Turtles. And um, when he mentioned, he tells her his method, she says, is this honorable? And Shredder says, honor Cowrie, this is vengeance. Oh, don't don't take so, the Punisher right there. Basically, yeah, ha ha ha. So basically, Splinter was telling Cowrie that her grandfather was mis was a complete misled. You know, he's he was misleading her that there was so much more she could do. She doesn't have to live in his shadow and follow his ways. And now I think through this, she's gonna start seeing what kind of person her great grandfather really was. And Baxter Stockman sends a bunch of mousers and flybots to attack the turtles. And thank God Donatello detects it and actually runs to um, the rescue. We don't see him for the rest of the issue, but the flybots attack. And you'd think that the target would be Donnie or the turtles, but it's not. Spoiler alert here, guys. The target is Splinter. Take out the rat and the, and the rest of the family will fall apart. And then after this, Shredder's sending a wave of foot soldiers to make sure that the robots um, dealt with the turtles justly. This is going to be, this is all coming to a gigantic head. I cannot wait for us to get to issue 50. I can't wait to read issue 48, 49, and 50 together. This is a really strong series. I, I can't recommend it enough. It's an amazing series. If you're not on the TMNT boat yet, find a way to jump on. The free comic book day book sums up issues 1 through 44. Uh, brilliantly and then all you have to do is start from 45 up and then trade paper back your way back later if you want everybody I've recommended this book to uh, has come back and told me nothing but really really good things all right. all right we're in the digital books now and we're starting with big trouble in little China issue yep. number 12 and in this issue uh, this was actually a uh, pretty cool actually like from last issue we found out that uh, low pan actually was trying to look for the black serpent tongue and got the powers and by the way it goes a little beginning where it's kind of a little and where they try to bring uh uh jack uh, what was his name jack yeah jack back to life which they didn't do well because jack's still in hell and they're uh, going on their journey for him to find his way out of there and he meets up with lopan and he says like uh you know, Jack, I have the power now to find a black serpent tongue, and I made a, pa a promise to the demons, and yada, yada, yada. Basically, what happened in the last issue, and he does some to uh, one of his friends as well. So the black serpent's tongue is a sword, but when the sword is touched, this big, huge, gigantic monster comes in, and then he sees both Jack and Lopan. So they both give this statement of uh, who's worthy of the Black Serpent Tongue, and Jack is actually the one worthy of 
the Black Serpent Tongue. He gets rid of Lopan, which is a uh, thank God that he did because I didn't like him. And he restores his friend, but actually passes it down to his friend to become the new superior. So he wakes up back from life as an 80s man, and he's like saying, this is 2015. Which actually reminded me of that uh, Grim Tales of Terror a little bit after reading that. So him knowing that he was in the 1980s, he is now in the year 2015. After being asleep for so long. Well, actually, the Army of Darkness. Wow, that that's crazy. Of... That's an awesome way to continue the series. Uh, so now he's in the future and everybody he knows yep. is either old or gone. Exactly. So that was like, wow, I did not expect that. And uh, did this the next out? two books, no, this first yeah. book did not come out this week, but part two did. Uh, I was checking out some of the <clears throat> Dark Horse books, and this came to my attention, and I really like it. There's no dialogue to these books, uh, or to this series. Uh, it's a four-part miniseries, three ninety nine out of Dark Horse, and it's called Ricardo Delgado's Age of Reptiles, Ancient Egyptians. And this is the first book, and there's no dialogue... There's nope. no real story. It's just really a masterful. It's a beautiful um, art yeah, and, rendition. And it shows like how they they hunt for stuff. Yeah, it shows the dinosaurs. And issue one was gorgeous. It showed brontosauruses. It showed tons of different dinosaurs. And again, no dialogue, no explanation. It's just them living out their lives. You can get through this book literally. It's like it's, watching Animal Planet. Exactly. It's like watching a documentary. You're just watching. And then you get to the last page, and it's to be continued. The first one followed one dinosaur. Now this week, issue number two came out. Which is this cover right here. And this issue followed the uh, Tyrannosaurus or, Rept or Raptor. I couldn't tell what kind of dinosaur it is, but it followed this dinosaur uh, throughout the entire uh, book. And there was also a group that also uh, did more... It was more bloody, actually. Yeah, this one had more about hunting and a lot of killing that and went on. And and stuff like that. So uh, this was actually more of a way of how they hunt. And the color of the red was, like, really amazing. Mm -hmm. It was, like, all red and everything. That was, like, uh, something... Uh, the artwork... Really... If you're going to buy this book... Um, this book is more of an art book. You know, it's there's no dialogue, there's no on story. If you like dinosaurs, uh, if you like this art style, I'm, I'll tell you the truth, I really do. This is definitely the book for you. This is more of a guilty pleasure, I guess, for us, because we yeah. actually stumbled across this series. Really good, though. I love it. I think this is great. I can't wait for the next issue. Granted, you'll get through the book in two seconds, but you can always go back, and I've gone through this book at least two or three times already. The artwork is so gorgeous, and every time you flip through it, you see something else that you really like. The artwork definitely makes this book worth the three ninety nine, in my opinion. Yeah. And ironically, I'm going again with Angel and Faith, Season 10, Issue number 16. Now, Angel is with Buffy right now, so the main star of this book is Faith. Faith gets um, <sighs> approached by... Um, the police officer, Brandt, and, really? uh, Brandt, well, Brand, 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 I'm yeah. calling him Brand, anyway, she gets approached by him, and he's looking for Angel, and she says, and he says, if you help me out, I'll, I'll do you a favor, and then when she says he's out of town, he says, well, tell me, give me, uh, give me some information, and I'll owe you a favor, and, he takes it up. She got a new apartment in London, so she uses him to help her out uh, moving. And then he tells her that Angel's out of town. And then he says, well, you know what? A Slayer's just as good as an Angel uh, when push comes to shove. So basically, since Angel's not around, he's putting faith on the case. And, and this is actually connected to uh, the visions Angel was having about a kid or a teenager in school being murdered. Um, again, remember, they're having those premonitions, but yeah, it's yeah. not connected to them. It's somebody else doing the murders, and they're seeing it as them doing it. And Faith is the one put on the case. Fred follows with her, and it turns out there are vampires in this school. However, it's not the vampire that we see in this um, part of the book where they're at, like, a cafe, and uh, Fred gets attacked by one of the co-eds. Co co 
who is actually a vampire. Of course, huge fight, lots of action, great stuff. And Faith actually does get the uh, stabby stab on uh -huh. by the end of this issue. But it turns out that person is not involved in whatever's happening. And then throughout this issue, you see this girl called um, Mary, who's being stalked by these three girls. Mary's a pushover. She's in love with this guy, but this guy has a girl who's already very attached to him, and she's she's very pushover e. And these three girls take an interest in her, and they want to help her. And um, yeah, it gets to a really extreme point at one point. So. They regroup, and they figure the best way for Faith to get any information is to go in deeper undercover. So she goes in as a substitute teacher, and she sees Mary, and she sees that she gets picked on, and um, she says, I'm here if you want to talk. Mary walks away, and then the ending I'm going to leave out for now, but let's just say that the girl that was bugging Mary might not be bugging Mary anymore, or picking on Mary, or doing anything bad to marry Whoa. ever again and uh, yeah to be continued so Angel and Faith right now is taking a very heavy turn towards just Faith because Angel's busy with Buffy I'm okay with this for now and obviously the story is kind of connected uh, however it's its own case uh, I'll be happy when Angel comes back to Angel and Faith though just because uh, I feel Angel makes the time. book All right, guys, so give us just two seconds, and we will continue with this indie comic review. All right, we're back, and now we're on The Witcher, Fox Children, issue four of five. Yeah, and this one actually picked up very nicely in this issue. And all I have to say is that it's just them fighting off against, because uh, they're on a ship and they're still looking for the treasure, they're fighting off against these um, type of fish or, or, actually, is a fish? Or well, it, it it's like these uh, type of animals. That, Let's call them demon fish. Yeah, demon fish. Yeah, and uh, he's just like strategizing, saying like, you know, let's just uh, get them off the ship. And he uses um, Garrett uses uh, his powers to get them off because he doesn't have a sword anymore since we already know what happened from the last issue. And what they wanted to do just to get rid of uh, the fish faster was to throw the woman that they took on board in the last issue to throw in the water. And Gerard's like saying, we're not going to put the child uh, down the water. And he was like really, really against that. And I don't blame him because you're going to use a child as bait. I mean, that's really, you know, not good. And then they're, they're, this other guy who tried to escape got not only a turtle bite, but the alligator that was there, and it was like really bloody. So, lots of demonic uh, stuff happened in this issue. So now the next issue, and I will say the last page does have nudity. Oh. Yeah. And uh, who they meet with is uh, very, uh, le let's just say, uh, might be dangerous, might very well be dangerous. To be concluded. That's all I'm going to say. Now, if you ever wanted to hate America, and um, I honestly love this. A lot of people were talking about this book, and uh, I know it was reviewed on uh, Frontline, and a few people were talking to me uh, or sending me messages to check this book out. So I read this one. We Stand on Guard, issue number one. Wow. This was a very good book, and there was a Superman reference in here, so I know why some of you uh, told me to check it out. So anyway, it opens up in Ottawa, Ontario, basically Canada, 2112. And there was a bombing, or there was some, uh, there was a, um, you know, there was a bombing, and uh, now everybody's trying to figure out who did the bombing, and then one of the kids made a joke, what if it was Canada? What if we did it? And then he makes a joke about the burning of the White House that the Canadians did like 300 years ago. And it's like, okay. And then out of nowhere, Canada gets nuked or bombed by America. So apparently it might have been Canada that attacked America first. We don't know. But anyway, the family that we see in the beginning of the issue, almost all of them die. The only ones that survive are the daughter and the son. And... 
Then it fast forwards to the future. We don't know how far into the future, but the daughter went from being a little girl to a young adult. And she's in the wilderness now, I'm guessing hunting or just trying to... She's looking for a brother, actually. He was brought to an American camp. And uh, she gets attacked by a robot. And then she gets saved by this group of mercenaries who work for Canada to make sure that Canada stays safe from the... Uh, American robots or whatever, they think she's a spy first, they don't trust her, and then while they're healing her, this is where the Superman story comes in, one of the guys actually has a tattoo of the Superman S on his oh, arm. Let me see. It's right here. Oh, wow. And she's like, what the hell? Truth, justice, and the American way? Um, and then he explains that one of the creators of Superman, which is true, Joe Schuster, was born in Canada. And then he gives an analogy about how Canada is like Krypton. We send our best out into the world to discover. Mm -hmm. And America was more like Metropolis, this big... It was a really good analogy, though, by the way. I loved it, and I thought it was great. But then this gigantic uh, robot shows up out of nowhere. And the rest of the book is them trying to take it out. And then they want to steal the AI from its core. And then it turns out the, there is no AI. It's actually man-piloted. And the guy who has the Superman tattoo doesn't make it. Oh, how could you do that? But they still believe that this girl, I forgot her name, um, Amber. How could I forget that name of all names? Oh. This girl, Amber, was a spy. They give her a gun, and basically they can't kill um, the soldier, the American soldier, because he surrenders, and by law the law of war, if the soldiers can't kill him, but a civilian, because she was a civilian at the time, can. And there's an argument about she doesn't have to do this, let we should just do it, or we should just take him prisoner, whatever, we can't do it, and then out of nowhere, boom, she does it. So this girl has a serious hating for America. Well, her whole family was eliminated because of them. So she joins the group, and it's welcome to the 2-4 to be continued. Whoa. Then you get some sketches. This is an excellent book, and I left out all the dialogue. I talked about what happened in the book instead because this is a good book. I would definitely recommend checking it out. It was a really, really good book. I'm looking forward to uh, the next issue. It looks really great. All right. All right, The Wicked and Divine, or The, the Divine, issue number 12. Yeah, and mm -hmm. this book was more along the lines of doing a... Uh video interview like basically it's about these three students uh and uh bith i think that's what his uh, or her name is um wants to do like research about uh this evidence about what happened uh to one of the uh the guys like basically it's more of an investigation and uh this um like this guy i think it was african-american who was actually lucifer is actually uh, part of the uh, whole of uh, like helping with the video documentary of uh, uh, it was about the case of Indiana I think that's what um, his name was and uh, he's just saying you know uh, I know who did this so whoever it is you know you got your exclusive so let's go get him so uh, they're looking for Morgan who actually was the one that got kidnapped after going into the train with all these demons. So they find her, and when they find her, there's so many videotapings of uh, him going up against her and all these uh, demonic stuffs, and basically everything that they wanted to get was on camera, and with the snap of the finger, like the, the snap of the finger is the one that plays the key role in this story, just uh, <clears throat> to get her trapped, and basically he just beats the snot out of her. And then... Uh, I forgot what his name was, um, the robot that came in, uh, just saying, you know, like, what the hell are you doing, you know, like, uh, you're killing and that's not how, what we're supposed to do, and, um, that's it, they just left, and, um, then this, uh, one guy that came in just said, you know, I guess we're gonna find out who he is in the next issue, so... He's been around. I've seen him in a few issues, actually. Yeah, I just can't remember what his name was. So, it's an eh issue, but I'll give it another try, so I'll keep it. I'm really happy with this book. Chew. 
Issue number 50. Ah, oh, 50. The Collector versus Chew. We find out after so many, or after several issues, what Tony whispered to um, Cho. And what she whispered to him was, you have to eat polio. <laughs> so he's known for a while, and you get, it goes back and forth between the fight between the Collector and Cho, and the past where he eats, where he finally does actually eat polio. So now he has all of polio's memories and his abilities. So apparently eating polio gives Cho the oomph he needs to beat the Collector, and he beats him. He beats him really good, and um, what's her name? Gives Olives gives him the chocolate knife, and she says, kill him with this for me. And in the end, he does actually kill him. And what the collector's expecting is for Cho to eat him. And he said, could, to eat a piece of him, to collect all. Oh, That's okay. how they keep their immortality, basically. It's kind of like the Highlander, but not. And um, yeah. Cho says, you're half right. You're going to die. But I'm not eating you, and um, the only thing that's going to eat you are the rats. And then the collector talks about something that's coming, about the space fruit, the fire riding. And then he, as he's saying, I can help you, eating me will give you that information. He's like, I'll find out some other way. And the collector, after so many issues, uh, for so long I believe, is gone. And they show a, a bit of a funny scene where the collector ends up in hell and guess who the head of hell is? Poyo's the head of hell. Oh. And the reason they gave us that funny moment is because of the last page epilogue, the real serious moment. Mm -hmm. And that I'm not going to spoil, however. Chew has been an amazing series, and I cannot wait um, for the next issue. It's a really, really, really great, um, what do you call it, uh, story. If you haven't read it yet, tons of trade paperbacks out there. I would definitely recommend it. All right. Just to sing the Avenger, issue number two. We're in Dynamite. Yeah, and I think his name was Richard Benson, was it? Uh, yes, yep. Richard Benson. So it left us off with it from last issue where he's going down the elevator shaft to, uh, you know, find out um, <coughs> about the stuff that was in the last issue. So what he does is that he finds the guy um, who he wants to morph himself into to find more evidence of... Um, you know, what we saw from the last issue. Uh, basically, he needed, uh, how can I say, some more evidence to just find out um, what, uh, from Mr. Eugene, I think his name was. Yeah. Yeah. So he Mr. Want, Ernest. Yeah, Mr. Ernest, right. So as disguise of them, he went to Mr. Eugene to uh, find out more information as in disguise because Benson can d disguise in anything. Then these uh, red light creatures come in and uh, attack him. And it's not Richard Benson, because that's who I thought it was at first, but it wasn't. It was, uh, they were going after Smitty, and then Benson comes in to actually uh, stop all this. And it was like a really intense fight scene where they get away and Benson follows them to find out where they are. But it's not just the humans, it's the animals too. Wow. Uh-huh. And that is just disgusting. These uh, you say that skinned, again. Uh, creatures. Yeah, I know, right? You had the same feeling I did. All right, Mask Two, issue number four. And oh my gosh, this issue. Wait till you see what happens in the end, though. But I'm gonna save that. So it's basically uh, the spider talking about. Um, oh, how can I forget? Like uh, it was like the main part of the story. Um, about the. The, no, no, the no, end of the world? Down. No, it's not the end of the world. It was about um, this character. Oh, wow, how do I forget? Um, the Red... Ah, Red Death. Thank you, yeah. So he's telling Shadow and everybody about the Red Death, saying all of you had to have met the Red Death. And some of them don't remember me in the Red Death, but a lot of them should know. And then uh, it talks about the Red Death of how she became the Red Death. And her story was, like, really sad. So now what they need to do is to try to end the Red Death 
by using uh, the group. So they're trying every which way, and the shadow saying the shadow knows all. He tries to uh, see how he could get to her, and all the other teams are trying to get to, excuse me, the Red Death. And uh, we have Peter Cannon, who actually decided to help along, because remember the last issue he said he wasn't going to, actually comes in and uh, to help out with the Red Death and everything else. But that's what it really was focused on. This book was more focused on the Red Death, but our teams were sent through <coughs> different times in different places. More time All travel. separated. <laughs> And that is what's making me stay on this issue because I got to see how these uh, separate uh, times of the teams are going to survive through this. So that was really good. All right. We have a number one. Mm -hmm. Will Eisner is the spirit issue number one. Yeah. And the spirit actually appears in just one page, really. So what's the main plot of this then? The plot of this is that everybody thinks the spirit is dead. So what they're trying to do is that there's these uh, people, uh, well, cult, actually, who is known as uh, the spirit. They find out, we find out about how cult died. But actually, it's like saying, uh, you know, that I wasn't killed. I'm just a spirit, a ghost, a ghost no. phantom known as the spirit. So everyone thinks that the spirit is dead. So what they're trying to do is that they're trying to find out who killed the spirit and this one girl who was close to the spirit actually um, was a little bit sad about this. Then there's like these uh, kids, or, or they look like kids that are men, who are going on the investigation about uh, finding the spirit's killer. And uh, they meet, they have a boulder who's actually on their side to find out more investigation. And this guy who's a pitcher actually uh, captures the guy who was sort of behind all this. And uh, they're like saying, you know, we're on the case and we're going to find out who did this to Spirit. And it's just enough said, that's it. that. Enough said. So that's what really the whole story is about. I mean, if you want to read more <clears throat> about it, definitely pick up the book. This book has been advertised in the back of every single IDW book for the past month and a half. And it's because of that that I've decided to take an interest in Onyx. Issue number one. So something crashes down. There's a lot of covers, by the way. Something crashes down on Earth. And it, there is a satellite that detects meteorites. But the satellite doesn't detect this. And 130-somewhat people were killed. Uh, 100 and... I'm trying to get the numbers. Hundreds of people were killed. I'm not going to go crazy looking for the number because it's just a number. Because of this uh, asteroid. And they think they can't understand how the asteroid bounced. So there's a team of soldiers that actually follow uh, where a second asteroid which followed it crashed. And that asteroid wasn't an asteroid. It was Onyx. And the team after um, flying close enough to where both asteroids both landed, uh, it turns out there's these mutant-like creatures and they have to jump out of their uh, ship. There's also a girl named uh, Loner. That's her tag name. And uh, she can't get her boosters to work. So she's going to basically die. And then Onyx shows up and saves her. And the team figures, hey, you saved our teammates, so obviously you're good. That's why we haven't shot you yet. But what are you? And that's when Onyx tries to explain what's going on. And let's just say there's a lot of crazy stuff going on. They find one of the soldiers that was attacked uh, in the crashed helicopter. And they were like a rescue team. And what happens is Onyx kills that person. Why? Because... She, Onyx claims he's, uh, it's too late for this person, he's already um, infected, and that's what ensues the fight, and Onyx makes quick work of the people, and then Onyx explains what's there, it's, um, what is it, a, um, oh, what's it called, the, it's basically, it, it destroys all life, all sentient life on a planet, it 
the spore landed on Onyx's planet and then slowly things started mutating, things started changing and then everyone died. So the armor that Onyx is wearing was made to stop the um, spores from hurting other planets. And Onyx followed this one to Earth and unfortunately already the wildlife is mutating thanks to the spore. Um, and it kind of ends with Onyx needing to see the government and, you know, to get things to stop this from happening. And it turns out that there's something else going on with some of the army men, especially the captain in particular. So they're going to use Onyx, and it turns out, spoiler alert, Onyx is a girl. We find that out uh, before the wildlife attacks again. And they're going to keep her for now, and then... Um, once the menace is taken care of, they're going to take care of Onyx too. Somehow. Even though it's been proven that Onyx has far more superior technology than they do. Mm. I don't know how that's possible. But anyway, great book. I would definitely recommend checking it out. The artwork is gorgeous and the story is really great. I left out a bunch of stuff in between. I left out most of the dialogue because you guys really have to read Onyx. It's a really great book. I just wish I could remember what that spore was of I can't remember what it, the name of it was but that's fine as I said read the book excellent worth the previews and the end of all the books definitely uh, lived up to its expectation for me and with that that's it for this indie review guys as always don't forget to check out comic related com uh, comic frontline and frontline gaming zone together we are your number one source for comic related news reviews and a whole bunch more and, and also don't forget to check out zone 4 podcast as well didn't I say that no you didn't you said front comic frontline frontline gaming zone Comic Frontline, Frontline Gaming Zone, Zone4Podcast.com. Yes, there you go. All together, we are your number one source for comic-related news, reviews, and a whole bunch more. This is what happens when I screw up my uh, outro. And until next time, everybody, take care, keep reading, keep collecting, and we'll see you guys in the next review. Later, everybody.